Friday again. I'm still here in uh, Vendover. This is the most friendly, the most RV friendly town. Let's see, are the poker players friendly like that? <laughs> Need the gas money, buddy. Need the gas money. I drove around the city, you know, explore a little bit. Everything is along the main street, but it's interesting. This is small town, has uh, 4,200 people. It started uh, in 1930. Some uh, guy who had some business here start, uh, you know, doing some attractions for people to come from Salt Lake and stuff. Currently, they have election going on. Current major in this current situation, situation has a really funny name. Here, <laughs> Corona. And he's running for re-election. I don't know how's that gonna work out in this year. Good luck, buddy, good luck. And at the other end of the town, there's the famous Vendover Cowboy. This is really cool place. So here I am at the Pancho Villa's Cantina in uh, Pepper Mill, Vendover. And uh, it's Sunday, about uh, after eight o'clock, and I am, with this, finishing my stay. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna move west on uh, Highway 80 towards Reno. I like it, these last 10 days, played uh, enough poker like, and lost $300. So Mormons got, got me. A uh, game I already told you I liked, but cards just killing. Last night, a lot of exciting hands. Today, a little less, but I'll tell you some after dinner. So I ordered fish tacos, two of them <laughs> for $25. And uh, I hope it's good. So the first bite, a uh, little bit plain. I think it needs maybe salt, pepper. The best fish tacos I ever ate at Commerce in LA. Eight dollars. I think three pieces. The best, trust me. Hey, I added little salt and it's excellent. Really good. It's Monday. My uh, 11th or 12th day here in West Vendover. It's about noon and only 28 degrees. During the night, it was 18. I'm moving west, going uh, towards Reno on Highway 80. Stick around for poker stories and hands review. I'm here at a pilot station. Came for propane. A couple times I had the problem finding propane where I'm in some remote areas, small towns, you know roads that lead nowhere you can find propane at some shell gas stations these pilot stations maybe uh u-haul most u-hauls have propane but here where i am west wendover you know 400 miles to reno how to find it so yesterday i solved that problem so go to app store and uh, search for gas buddy there it is and install it Once you have the app and you open it, you can click just find the gas. You can also register, create your account, get some uh, savings. But here's the trick how to find the propane, because this shows you all gas stations in the area where we are. In upper left corner, you see this little square with uh, sliders. That's the filter. Click on a, on a filter, scroll down, and here it is, propane. Click on that so it's active. And it says show two stations. So this means in the area where I am, there are two stations that sell propane. Flying J and Conoco. So I just left Vendover and you can see here on GPS, the time is one o'clock and I'm gonna drive uh, whatever, 50 
miles to Wells and be there at 12.52. Well, that's because the whole Nevada is in a Pacific time zone, except West went over. They took it out from Pacific time and left it with Utah mountain time. Just when you go out of town, you enter the Pacific time zone. It just takes uh, maybe 15 minutes for the phone to catch the signal from the towers that are showing uh, Pacific time. This is my first stop, Wells, which is like our drive uh, from uh, Vendover. And uh, another hour, there's uh, Elko. Look at this. This is RV Park where I stayed tonight. It's just a triangle on the intersection of the roads and they charge like uh, $30. I have a Passport America membership so it was 50% off. The town is like 1200 people and uh, it just all spread around some... Uh, it's a dump. It's just uh, mobile homes and nothing really serious. Uh, uh, there's Motel 8, I think, Super 8 Motel, and uh, Dollar Store, Family Dollar. Across the street is Roy's Grocery Store, and here, China Town Casino Motel. I even don't know what it is, and I don't want to know. This is a Heritage Park, and coming this, this is like two blocks only. I saw like seven, eight motels. They're all small strip motels, closed, and look like scary scene. So, time to review some uh, poker hands. I don't want this to turn into whining session of bad beats, but basically that's what was going on for 10 days. I lost every pot that is bigger than $300, $1,000, $1,600. And when I suck out on someone, pot is like $80 or 150 so even I am on both ends of Saka financially. How come I cannot win a big pot? So now it's whining, but it's the fact. Also, I donated several times, going all in and creating a big pot with questionable hands, especially a couple times with a flush draw. Here's an example. I have nine, seven of spades. There was like $25 raise preflop I call there's uh, three callers, pot is already $100 on the flop, the razor bets uh, 50 and uh, I call. Now we have 200 in a pot on a turn. I have open ended straight and a flush draw. Usually we think that's a million outs, but is it? Well, you tell me, what do you do here? He bet again 50 and I like every other donkey, I go all in. I had a maybe 270. It took him a while. I, I, I was sure he's folding, but it took him a while and he calls. He has ace eight. Hard to explain the call. Maybe he was already stuck with enough money in the pot. What does he think I have? A pair of deuces? Or properly he read the draw and he said, you know, let's gamble. But the point is, in uh, me having only 40%. Do you put this money with 40%? I had a couple like that. So, you know, over 10 days, that's probably close to $1,000 in similar situations that I gave away. So here's one, uh, when I suck out, I want a button and I have a pocket queens. I make it 25 and I get two callers. Floppies. Ace, King, Jack, DOA, baby, DOA, dead on arrival. First guy bets uh, 25, second guy calls, do I need to get lucky and get a 10? Probably, I call. Turn is Jack. Well, they both check, so let's get that free card, I check, and the river is queen. All right, and that queen brings the flush. Guy bets 50, gets a call, 
And I go all in for about 150. That's all what I had at that moment. I get a call and the fold guy shows King Jack and he taps on the king like king is full house with the king that's higher than the queen. But he has jacks with kings. I have queens full. So that's one when I sucked out. But again, pot is not 1500 hours. So, so here's uh, one where I voluntarily donated. I have ace jack and I'm uh, in a blind. So I make it 15 when it comes to me because everybody just limped. I get two callers. Flop is ace high. I bet six dollars. The guy makes it 24, gets the call, and I make it 64. Both of them call. Well, when both of them call you, there's something suspicious. I don't see there's some big draw that you would call for $64 re-raise. I check. I'm almost giving up on a hand. Well, both of them check. On irrelevant rear card, almost irrelevant, I bet 100 and uh, get the call. I show pair. He has pocket sixes for a set on a flop. I could save there probably under $50. Okay. So here's everybody's favorite pocket aces. I make it 27, get three callers. Pot is over $100. Flop is nine high. There was a check. I bet 65, get the call and then 265. Kind of obvious. I suspect straight. So I mark aces. Let me tell you, it's the same dealer that killed me on that $1,600 pot that was in previous video. The same dealer. How's that possible? Well, turn and river are kings. On the river, the guy bets 200 and gets a call. He shows jack 10 for a straight the other guy shows the flush so again my ace is basically cracked by both of them here comes aces one more time this was not big pot and it's the same dealer i get aces I, and i said like three hands later aces again and i said my god he's gonna kill me so i played so slow and bet minimum to avoid losing big pot again this time I win. Why? Well, just because it's a small pot. It's, isn't it obvious? Isn't that obvious? That was Saturday session. Sunday was uh, first hour good, then we combined tables, and then uh, I was card dead, then got pocket queens. Basically, on a river, the guy with the big stack, and he had over 3,000. We all have like six, 700, he has 3,000. He goes all in. I'm not making their hero calls, so I fold it. Two hands later, I pocket queens again. The guy across of the table from me, he goes all in when it's obvious, flush on a river. Or it's not, but it doesn't matter. I fold. So I end up that day with uh, $30 plus. All together, played the... Uh, like 35 hours, lost $350, about $10 per hour. 10 days in Vendover. I hope Reno treats me better. Time for my top five. It started with watching a YouTube video. I heard that uh, Seven Mile Casino in San Diego is open because that's going to be down the road, my trip. Let's check it out. You probably clicked on this video because you like seeing poker hands. So today, I'm here to give you exactly what you want. Drone shots and EDM music. So this hit me. This video hit me and made me start thinking. So right now, I'm going to give you top five reasons why my videos suck reason number five i don't have drone shots or cool electronic uh, music beats and i don't want them reason number four my video title those little pictures you see on youtube i don't have a 
blonde girls in bikinis. You know, I have also my RV traveling videos, and if you look on some channels, most of them, young girl in bikini showing her ass while she's uh, in a minivan looking at the palm trees on the beach. Don't have a young girlfriend? So if there's any volunteer or you can recommend something, hit me. I need a blonde girl for title shots. Reason number three, lack of planning. I never plan what to do. I just take my phone and I start talking to it. I have no clue what's going to be down the road. I talk for like half hour and then I make 15 minute video. It takes me a while to cut out nonsense that I say. Like in last uh, video, I said uh, Jamie G, actually I met Tony G, you know, the fat guy poker player that yells, Jamie G is <laughs> my buddy from Madison. <laughs> Reason number two is lack of caring. I really don't care about the quality of these videos. I really don't care what you're gonna think about them. I make them as my uh, diary. When I started the traveling, start making uh, RV traveling uh, uh, vlog and also poker vlog because I hit so many casinos that it deserves to be called poker vlog. So basically, I don't care. And because of that, I never gonna have a million subscribers or 10 million views. And that's fine because this is just my diary for myself. This actually leads us in reason number one and the main reason that explains everything. Reason number one, why my videos suck. I saw a YouTube video from some big shot expert on uh, YouTube videos and how you make uh, 5 million views and subscribers. And he basically explained that uh, the main mistake is because there are three types of YouTube videos, instructional, informational, and selfish. Instructional is, you know, how to, I don't know, create Excel spreadsheet, informational, you know, on some topics, you can learn some stuff you don't know about. And selfish is made by people that really don't care, except, and all they want is to be in the video. So looks like I like to be in the pictures. Put this kid in the pictures. That's it. So I'm making selfish videos that are all about me and only for me, none for you. So see you in next selfish video. Till then, good luck on the Feldboys.